This morning, I'm in the Hornwood Museum Natural History Gallery, which is where I am many mornings because I work here. Um, and I'm here with the badges because I'm going to be talking about uh, adaptations to extreme darkness for my Extreme Curator Challenge. Um, now, badgers don't live in extreme darkness unless they're underground in their, in their um, sets, but they have very good night vision, like most mammals. And the reason they have that is because they're, they're active in the dark. Owls are really well adapted to seeing in the dark. They have these really big eyes and they've got a really unique system in their head where their eyes are actually held in bony tubes which attaches it into the skull, which links their eyes to their hearing. And that allows them to make a mental map during the day when they can see, and they associate that with the sounds that they hear, which they hear during the day, but they also hear at night. And that allows them to also find prey when they hear it moving around in the undergrowth. It's a really, really amazing system which allows them to hunt in complete darkness. When it comes to finding your way around in the dark, um, bats have got to be the masters. They use a system called echolocation, which is where they produce a series of high frequency clicks. And that click echoes from all the things around them in the environment. And they detect the echoes of those clicks um, through their big ears, and then build a mental map of the world around them that, that's constantly changing and in three dimensions. And it allows them to basically see in a very similar way to, to the way which we see with our eyes. So my challenge today is going to be to find this phone, um, which is going to be making a little bit of noise, but not too much. Um, whilst blindfolded, because I can't actually do it in the dark because we can't video really it. Um, but we, what we can do is take away my ability to get any light into my eyes, and that means that I'll be basically working in complete darkness, but only I'll be in complete darkness. You'll still be able to see. Okay, so um, I have a blindfold, which is pretty good at cutting out the light. Um, I can still get a little bit of light in from the sides here, so... Uh, Given that that's the case, uh, I might need something a little bit extra just to hold it in tightly. Okay, now I think it's fair to say that there is absolutely no light getting into my eyes at all. Um, I can't see a thing. So I can use my hands to feel around, which is like what a mole would do, for example, uses its uh, whiskers and, and touch sensitive uh, uh, nose to find its way around in the dark. Or I can try using echolocation, um, which is what I'm going to give it a go now. Okay. Ah, there's an echo there, which sounds less echoey here. Okay, so there's something there. In a box. <coughs> Just walrus. Well, that was a real challenge. Um, losing one of your senses um, and being plunged into complete darkness uh, makes it really hard to do anything. You get to complete turned around. And for animals that live in those sorts of environments, um, being able to survive without ever seeing is a remarkable feat. Um, there are species out there like uh, the blind cave fish, which lives in perpetual darkness. They don't even have eyes anymore. They've, they've lost their eyes because they just don't need them. And yet they manage to find all the food they need. Um, they even manage to find mates and reproduce. What's even more remarkable than animals that live in a completely dark environment are people who have lost their ability to see, but have adapted to live in a very busy modern world. Um, and a very, very small number of those people have, have actually become able to echolocate, um, which just means that there's a slight change in the way in which their brain processes information, and it means that they're able to actually see using sound. If you're interested in finding out more about organisms that live in extreme environments and how they adapt to those environments, 
Come along to the Hornland Museum and Gardens for the Extremes exhibition that runs from the 15th of February.